When first I saw the love light in your eye I thought the world held not but joy for me And even though we've drifted far apart I never dreamed but what I dreamed I love you as I've never loved before Since first I saw you on the village green Come to me in my dreams of love alone I love you as I love you when you are sweet When you are sweet First time ever I saw your face, I thought the sun rose in your Of a 
captive bird that was there at my command, my love, and the first time. dream 
you dare to dream Really do come true Someday I'll wish upon a star And wake up where the clouds are falling Melt like lemon drops Oh, way above the chimney tops That's where you find me upon a star and wake up where the clouds are far
name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Please have a seat, everyone. It's my sad duty to welcome you here on behalf of Jerry, and Chris and Marlon, Kevin and Marley and Austin and Scarlett and all the family as we come not to celebrate the life of Teresa. We, we don't feel it's much of a celebration today, but to honor her life. And we are very grateful to extended family and friends who have gathered with us in this sacred place that means so much to our family. You have gathered here with us today. And we're also grateful for those family and friends who are joining us in the live streaming service too and sending us messages of support and lovely little memories of Teresa. Please know that all of that is a great help and comfort to us all at this time. But friends, we have gathered, as I said, in this sacred space to offer the most sacred prayer we can offer in our tradition for our dear Teresa. So even in the midst of deep sorrow and in the difficulty of this day, we come here in faith to honor her life and place ourselves before God, our Almighty Father, and his mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the resurrection and the life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us Listen kindly to our prayers, O Lord, as our faith in your Son raised from the dead is deepened. May our hope of resurrection for dear Teresa also find you strength. And this do we prayer we make through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So we are comforted by many things at a time like this, and thankfully with Teresa, many, many, many happy and fond memories, but as a faith community, we're supported by the Word of God too. We placed the Word of God, the book of the Gospels with Teresa when we received her into church last night. So we're going to hear from the Holy Scripture ourselves now. And uh, Anne-Marie, you're going to come and share the first one with us, love? Thank you very much. A reading from the book of wisdom. He accepted them as a holocaust. The souls of the virtuous are in the hands of God. No torment shall ever touch them. In the eyes of the unwise, they appear to die. Their going looked like a disaster. They're leaving us like annihilation, but they are in peace. If they experience punishment as men see it, their hope was rich with immortality. Slight was their affliction Great will their blessing be. God has put them to the test and proved them worthy to be with him. He has tested them like gold in a furnace and accepted them as a holocaust. They who trust in him will understand the truth. Those who are faithful will live with him in love. For grace and mercy 
await those he has chosen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you very much, Anne-Marie. And just as we're seated, friends, we join in the canticle based on Isaiah 43, Be Not Afraid. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippines. For us, our homeland is in heaven, and from heaven comes the Saviour we are waiting for, the Lord Jesus Christ. And he will transfigure these wretched bodies of ours into copies of his glorious body. He will do that by the same power with which he can subdue the whole universe. This is the word of the Lord. of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still, and trust in me. 
There are many rooms in my Father's house. If there were not, I would have told you. I'm going now to prepare a place for you. And after I've gone and prepared a place for you, I shall return to take you with me so that where I am, you may be too. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas, one of the apostles, said, Lord, we don't know where you're going. So how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. So I've got an idea of what I want to say to you, whether I'll be able to or not, but we'll get there, eh? we'll take it stages at a time eh? as well. Eh? Until 1.22pm on the 6th of July, my tears were for my sister Teresa. Until 1.22pm on the 6th of July. My worry and angst every day was for my sister, Teresa. Until 1.22 p.m. on the 6th of July, I prayed to God Almighty, why was this poor woman suffering like this? I haven't had those thoughts since 1.22 p.m. on the 6th of July because Teresa is free from the very thing that kept us down. And we have to rejoice today for that because this poor wee soul was in a prison. And those of you who have suffered in your own families with dementia will know that experience too. We know we're not the only ones. But thank God in his heavens, he has answered our prayer and we are grateful for that. We're not grateful that uh, in our middle 50s, and at the age of 62, she has suffered this and has passed. I'm not grateful for that. But we're grateful that it's over. And we are praying every time. I know I can say that because I know Jerry and Chris and Kevin and Marlon and Marley and Austin and Scarlett and all the family and all you, our friends. I know that you all feel that too. And I know too that you won't mind me saying that out of everybody in this place that we should maybe have kind of got a wee bit of a hard life, Teresa was not the person that that should have been. Hmm? But we do not face this on our own. Thank God we have a great family. Thank God we have great friends. And believe you me, that's a real strength for us all. And we thank you most sincerely for that. Friends count more at this time than when Celtic's doing well or you know, whatever. Well, this is when that friendship counts more. And it's also when the faith that we profess as a Christian family counts more too. We're saying cheerio to Teresa in faith. And friends, I don't say that easy. It's not easy to be a faith person today when we see what's happened to our beloved Teresa. And believe you, me, we've asked him above a few times what it's all about. But faith is not a feeling. It's a feeling, well, to hell with faith. Faith is a belief system. It's in the fi very fiber of our beings that we have all been brought up with since our grandparents and parents. And for us in this part of the world, in this very building, that faith has been founded and nourished and flourished. It's part of our belief system. It's part of our worldview. 
If it's a feeling, hell, only does you from day to day then, as feelings do. Here today, gone tomorrow. But in this most sorrowful moment when we say goodbye to our beloved Teresa, that faith is there. And even though it doesn't answer all our questions, we say goodbye to her in trust and belief that the only, the only being who can sort this situation out now is God in his heavens. Because our faith tells us that we will enjoy Teresa's company again. And this wonderful woman whom we mourn so much today, this gentle, humble, modest, friendly, happy soul that we have known and loved. We'll see her again. And that, that tempers our grief with an anticipating joy. Think, oh my God, what a day that's going to be. When we see her smiling, that smile that we all loved as we enter into the homeland. When we've been talking, we're, kept, we're, we're a wee bit fed up hearing Jerry's chat up lines. <laughs> <laughs> and you all know them, don't you? And I think we decided, uh, I was going to ask Chris and Kevin this earlier on, if we could have a, a straw with our hands up poll about who thinks Jerry was kicking above? <laughs> and he's the first one to say it, eh? And even his brothers and sisters all thought that too, eh? But Jerry, you weren't, pal. And especially in these last six years since Teresa's onset, early onset was diagnosed. She was living with it. We saw in a wonderful way what Teresa had always thought in Jerry. And 43 years ago, they stood at this very altar and took their solemn marriage vows together till death do us part. By golly, have they lived to that? And like my brother Pat said the other day when we were talking, he said, Jerry, I've never introduced you as our brother-in-law. I've always just said this is my brother Jerry. And Pat added, he said, because we did that, because for your family, we know that you always introduce Teresa as your sister. And that's the way the Hazes and McKennas have been. It's no our fault that by some serendipity, 1976, we moved in the same street for Glasgow, <laughs> Craignaw Place, a few doors away. And it's no my fault that there was a handsome man among the McKennas and there was a beautiful woman among the Hazes. And Pat tried to keep Jerry away from her for ages <laughs> as well. He tried his best, no? But I think he went out for a glass of water one night and they had clicked and that was it. Was it David uh, Essex? <laughs> but honestly, Jerry, it's been... It's been wonderful for us to see you as a husband to Teresa all the time, but these last few years. To be faithful to one another, the vows you took at this altar. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. And so now we see what Teresa saw in you. <laughs> yeah? She always felt safe and loved by you. 
despite all the bravado that we've all seen and shared with Teresa and Jerry in their life together, with Kevin and Chris, our beloved boys, and then when the grandchildren come along with Marlon and Marley and Austin and Scarlett, oh my goodness, how happy she was with you all, you boys and girls. So we regret that she doesn't have a longer time to spend with you, but she will be with us forever. We've lost our physical company, but Teresa will remain with us forever. We will talk about it when we get together, maybe on a happier day than today. But we thank God that we have known this beautiful girl. I've known her all my life because she's my big sister. And you couldn't often say that about wee Teresa for the boot tree, as Jerry would call her all the time, eh? But friends, I know that there's only one, there was only one diminutive thing about Teresa, and that was her height. Everything about her, her generosity, her love, her smile, her personality, her determination, her hard work, her modesty was enormous. So the largest and generous way that we can. And it's lovely to be able to stand here before you as our brother, on behalf of my brother and sister and the rest of the family, and for Jerry and Chris and Kevin and the rest of their family, to say she was our wife. She was my mother. She was my grandma. She was my sister. And for you, I know, a great joy to say she was your friend. And that's a wonderful thing for us to honor today. And we do so in, in faith and friendship and as family. Tomorrow we'll bring another day. We'll live it in the physical absence of Teresa. But we will always remember her as this wonderful, wonderful lady who is taken too early from us. But our faith will tell us, hang on in there. Because one day, when our journey is complete, we will see her again. And the liturgy will tell us later on. And once more, we will enjoy her friendship. May she rest in peace. Amen. going to continue our prayers uh, for Teresa. Uh, some of the young folks in the family are going to come out and lead the intercessions, eh? So if Chris handed you a prayer, you need to come out now, I'm afraid. <laughs> Young Austin, on behalf of his sister and his cousin Marley, is starting us off with this little prayer that he wrote himself. Thank you, Grandma, for Scarlett and I's Grandma Fridays, for playing football with Marley and me, and for all the memories we made in Spain. We love you. Lord, hear us. Oh, 
For Teresa, who was a daughter of her Heavenly Father, that she may now enjoy once again the fullness and wholeness of life in the company of the Mother of God and all the saints, where her beautiful soul and perfect smile will once again shine. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For Jerry, Chris, Marilyn, Kevin, Marley, Austin and Scarlett, we thank them so much for putting their beautiful wife, mum and grandma with us so generously over 43 years of building up their lovely family. May that love hold and embrace them now at this time of sorrow. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all the family who loved Teresa as a daughter, sister, aunt, niece, and quite simply the best friend in the world, that they may be consoled by their faith in Jesus Christ and their many fond, loving, and happy, happy memories of her. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all our friends, <coughs> that they may know their friendship means so much to us, and they are very much part of our wonderful memories when we think of Teresa. The many meals, barbecues, nights out, holidays, and occasions, here at home and in Spain especially, these memories are even more precious to us and mean so much more to us now than ever before. Lord, dear us. Lord, graciously dear us. individuals and their family and friends who continue to cope day after day with conditions like dementia. May they enjoy their brief moments of recognition and find the strength to endure. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all those who do not have the love and support we all enjoy, that those who have to carry the difficulties of life on their own may find the love, help and support that we so generously give to one another to help them through their misfortune. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the gift of faith that on the saddest of days and in this most terrible moment we may cling on to our beliefs in Jesus Christ, who is the resurrection and the life, trusting that one day we will once again enjoy life with Teresa and all those we have known and loved in the glory, majesty and joy of heaven. We remember in particular our grandparents, Jim, Tess, Jimmy, Marie, and our brothers, John, Kenny, Jimmy, and our sister, my mum, Lorraine. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the voice of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for Teresa. May she share in the eternal life your Son has won for us. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. So friends, we are going to prepare the altar for the liturgy of the Eucharist now, and the family are going to present the gifts if they go to the back of church now. And, uh, and as we do so, we'll sing our next hymn, Come Back to Me With All Your Heart.
pray, brothers and sisters, that this, my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, accept the sacrifice at our hands, praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Let's stand and pray. Look favorably on our offerings, O Lord, so that dear Teresa may be taken up into glory with your Son, in whose great mystery of love we are all united. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Have a seat, everyone, or kneel if you wish. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son 
and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. John Ogilvy, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom we summon before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all these people scattered throughout the world. Remember Caesar, whom you called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in death may also be one with him in his resurrection. Then from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly bodies after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away from every tear from our eyes. For seeing you are God as you are we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord. Amen. May you bestow in the world all that is good. Take one each last one. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, Amen. in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. So, friends, let's stand together as we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ, the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Not in our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Friends, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Are you doing handshakes here, Father Willie? Right, okay. <laughs> That's right. Aye. So, if somebody gives you a handshake, handshake them back, but give them a wave or blow them a kiss, if not. Eh? Let's offer each other the sign of peace. <laughs> peace with you, Martha. <laughs> peace with you. Yeah. I, sorry, Pad, didn't get your name. Adam. Adam, okay. Thanks, Adam. Thanks, Adam. So as we break and share the bread, we pray together saying, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Have a seat or a kneel if you wish. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the banquet of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy 
turn under my roof. Though only ye say the word, my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. So Father Martin and myself will give out Holy Communion. Father Martin has been a good friend and a fellow priest for many, many years here in the Diocese of Galloway. But he's also an Irvin man as well, eh? so he knows us all very, very well. Just in case you're wondering who's giving you communion. <laughs> <laughs>
Grant, we pray, O Lord, that dear Teresa, for whom we have celebrated these most holy sacraments, may pass over to a dwelling place of light and peace. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So brace yourself, because Jerry is going to have a chat with us. Yeah. <laughs> I've got to clear up a few things that Jim said. <laughs> First met Teresa in 1976 in Birchie Hall when we moved in to the same street. And I quickly thought, wow, she's amazing. And I thought, how can I get off of her? <laughs> so, our brother Pat was about the same age, so we piled up together. But I was the one who using Pat. <laughs> and he's still hanging about with me the new. <laughs> but at first, I never ever managed to pluck up the courage to ask her out, because I thought she was just a wee step above. So that's a lie, she was a big step above. <laughs> but we went to a wedding one night up in Glasgow, one of Rita's weddings. <laughs> she liked to have a wedding cake with Rita. And when I went up on the train, Pat had warned me, you can get away about five different lashes they named, but don't go with my sister. I went, all right then. But something clicked that night, and she ended up, she was sitting in my knee. I thought, oof, I'll take this. Pat came in the living room and seen me, he's like, can I have a word? <laughs> <laughs> I just said, Pat, I'm no stone. <laughs> <laughs> but we got up the next morning. That night, to clear up the David Essex thing, Teresa told me I looked like David Essex, right? <laughs> that was... <laughs> it was I, I don't think that was that funny, actually, but... <laughs> but she did. That's what she said to me, right? By the way, there's no witnesses to that. Aye, I know. <laughs> well, I'm standing in the front of the altar. Surely I'm not going to tell her here. She did. Anyway, the next morning I got up, it was in our grandma's house where we had a lot of fantastic parties. All the family was always there, it was brilliant. But I thought, geez, oh, she'll wonder, what have I done? But I went in the living room, she was sitting, I could picture where she was sitting, and she gave me one of the beautiful smiles, one of them. And I thought, and she had a magazine, and she opened it, and she was looking at David Essex, she went. <laughs> I thought, I'm still in here. <laughs> anyway, we started going out together, and somebody asked me, when did you know she was the one? And I thought, probably right away. She was always, she, people say, what did you, how? I said, we so much in common. We so much in common. She was quiet and shy. <laughs> Didn't think that was that funny either. <laughs> she had a cracking personality. And she managed to hold on to her youthful looks all through her life. <laughs> but we got married to you 43 years ago, as Jim said. And as the two families really clicked, they got on brilliant together. It was like, became one big family. And we had loads and loads of fantastic holidays. We took care of Butlins nearly every year for about 10 years. The whole, I mean, I mean, it's all, because the family was big, but it became bigger when our kids all came along. And then she backed me every step of the way in life. She was, she was everything to me. And I used to get into that wee face every night, think, wow, what a lucky guy you are. I remember my sister saying at my ma's funeral that she would have loved, and my ma would have loved having three priests at her funeral. But more, more than that, she would have loved two lesbian lions at her funeral. <laughs> we've still got the three priests, but we're doing one lesbian lion, unfortunately. I don't really know what else to say apart from Jesus. I love you to bits. I always have. 
Okay, thanks very much. I'd like to thank Father Martin for making the appearance. Thank you very much, Father. Willie, for everything you've done. Thank you very much. If you're ever golfing with Willie and he's your partner, don't put him in charge of the gimmies. <laughs> That's golden rule. Before I finish off, I want to thank all my family for being there the past three years, and especially the ones that made me dinners. We Jade. Jackie, I'm trying to not forget anybody, Tree and Anbury, who came every Tuesday, Thursday. Uh, we Kirsty and Steve used to make his dinner, send us up soup. And they all used to, and Louise, and they all used to get his messages right. We're going to finish on this. We're going to finish on this. Is. They used to phone me up and say, do you need anything at Tesco or Asda or whatever? And I'd send them out a list, right? And they were all in it, there were six of them in it, right? And I quickly realised if it was under a tenner, they didn't take the money. <laughs> so the six of them got an order for nine quid fifty. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to finish with a big round of applause for Teresa. Thank you. That was the story for the defence. <laughs> Pat, you're up for the... <laughs> as well, eh? Yeah, I know it's the hardest thing for us to do today, but we're glad you did that, Jerry. But friends, it's now time for our concluding uh, prayers here in the chapel. We're going to sing our entire end hymn together before we take Teresa out to Holmesford Bridge Crematorium for a short service there. And then after that, please join Jerry and Chris and Kevin and Marlon and Marley and Austin and Scarlett and all the family back at the golf club, the Ravens Park Golf Club. It's uh, £3.50 a head. <laughs> <laughs> You're lucky you get the leaflets for nothing. <laughs> as well, eh? So there we are. Eh? <laughs> so let's brace ourselves for these final moments then. Eh? Let's stand together with Teresa. <laughs> Trusting in God, we have prayed together for Teresa. And now we come to the last farewell. There is indeed sadness in parting, no doubt about it. But we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall tr see Teresa again and once more enjoy her wonderful friendship. And although as a congregation we will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in our faith in Jesus Christ. choirs of angels come to greet you. May he lead you to paradise. May the Lord enfold you 
in his mercy. May you find the eternal life. <laughs> May the choirs of angels come to greet you. May they speed you to paradise. May the Lord enfold you in his mercy. May you find eternal life. May the choirs of angels come to greet you. May they speed you to paradise. May the Lord enfold you in his mercy. May you find eternal Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend dear Teresa, in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him in the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Teresa in this life, some of which we have shared today. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to dear Teresa and help all who remain, we, her family, and dear friends, to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and dear Teresa forever. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. During the singing of our final hymn, we will remove the signs of baptism in order to take Teresa to her final commendation.
So, brothers and sisters, in peace, let us take Teresa to her place of rest. When you walk through a storm, hold your head up high and don't be afraid of the dark. At the end of a storm There's a golden sky And the sweet silver sound of love Walk on 